Ah, the low rights. Yep, wait a minute. Ah, there we go. Okay, takes a bit to come in, it seems. But alright then. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Lock Back to Lost Judgment. Once again, I'm your host, the Great and Mighty Vista Perez, and yes. I can't believe Lunatina got recast in the Bayonetta 3 because she wouldn't accept. Because she was being offered uh, $4,000 just to play Bayonetta, like the lead character of Bayonetta. That's kind of, that's kind of fucked up, don't you think? Yeah, but anyway, we're back with some Lost Judgment. So, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so, we gotta go back to the high school. Okay. Going through a nice little run. Mostly because for some reason my skateboard doesn't trigger, even though it should. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. Looks like school's out already. I gotta go check on Sour Sensei. Second floor. I believe that's where the faculty office is. Yep. Excuse me, Yagami-san? Huh? Uh, yeah, what's up? Kota-san, what's up? Did a teacher call you over? Actually, I wanted to talk to you. Okay. I saw it on the news earlier. Mikoshiba-sensei was killed. Yeah, you it's a damn shame. That, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's good to be honest. I figured you knew something. Yes, that's why you've been asking about him. You should have told us, man. I couldn't. I knew how hard you guys would have taken it. You know who did it? I mean, a lot for us to know. Seeing how he looked after us and all. We're still in the dark about that, mostly. Unless you guys have any leads. All we have to go on is he was probably killed soon after he stopped going to class. So... He really was murdered. He said on TV it took them two months to find the body. Would that mean it happened on the day he went missing? A good theory, Matsun, but you're starting to sound like one of those mystery club geeks. Oh, what did Sawa-sensei tell you? She give you anything solid? Nah, we didn't really get into it yesterday. Way too many uh, other things came up. Damn. Yeah, far too much for just... you all. It's hard hearing all this, man. Will you at least keep us posted if you find out anything? <laughs> no promises, I'm afraid. But hey, I'm glad you guys are warming up to me. I'm Matsui, by the way. That's more like it. Could 
Could you keep me in the loop, too? I didn't like Mikoshiba-sensei much, but I never imagined this. Now I'm kinda... conflicted about the whole thing. I get that. Anyway, I should get going. Sawa-sensei? Hey, Sawa-sensei? Look, I know I can't keep you off campus. I don't have that kind of authority. But would you please stop bothering me? Can you at least tell me what happened yesterday? Enough! How many times must I repeat myself? She's not gonna give me the time of day if I keep pushing her like this. Yes, I have to make do with just checking in on her. This picture of Mikoshiba was taken where they found the body. This location must be somewhere in Ichinsho. And if I'm gonna stay in on this case, I need to look into everything. Hey, Tsukumo, it's me. You think you could pin down where Mikoshiba's body was discovered? Of course. In fact, I could do that pretty quickly. Why? Did you want to go there now? That's the idea. Okay, but do note that it's been a few days since they found him. The police may have already scooped up the evidence. Yeah, but I want to check it out anyway. Then I can decide if it was a waste of time. <laughs> In other words, you've got a detective's intuition? What a superpower to have. Okay, here we go. They found Mikoshiba's body in an abandoned building near Sakura River. It's near a small park. On the second floor of the building, specifically. The first floor is just a bunch of empty boutiques. Okay. You're the man, Tsukumo. Thanks. Anyway, let's go there now. Yeah, I guess like, I just gotta let him come to me. Ow. How rude. There we go. Really, guys? Okay, yeah, uh, five thousand. Gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> ah, here we go. We found it. An abandoned building near the Sakura River. This must be where Mikoshiba's body was found. And it's locked. The lock looks easy to break, but it's daytime and there are people around. I should see if there's another way in. Hey, suspicious. Should I just break the lock and force my way in? No, it's still daytime and there's people around. I should see if there's another way in.
empty. What the? Yeah, that window is closed. Maybe this is an open window somewhere? Yeah, over here. Suspicious. Now that window is open. Well, it looks impossible to get up there. Seems like sneaking in from the front is out of the question. I should check the side or the back of the building. There's nothing there. Uh -huh. Interesting. Oh, okay. Guess I do gotta go and. Yes, it is probably to the side. Okay. Fencing, huh? I think I can get through that with a little effort. I have to head through the rear of the building. Well, the front won't work. I'll just have to improvise. So, let's improvise. I made my way through it. Now, hopefully, there's a way in on this side. window. I could use it to sneak in. I need something to give me a boost if I'm gonna climb up there. Well, let's see if I can find something. Hey. Maybe I can use that to give myself a boof. boost. And second part, no. That's too heavy. Good. I could climb up on this spot. Of course. Let's do it. Hmm. You can get through these areas by taking a running start and then pressing B at the exact right time. Okay. He just went towards a gap, then B when prompted to run, run along the wall. Press B when prompted to swing across a bar to safety. Ah! Alright then. That worked. Wait a minute. Yeah, I could just do this. When climbing a wall, move LS and press B to jump to another section of the wall.
Excellent. In we go. Hello? Anybody here? Coming through. Now, where exactly was the body? There's got to be some clues that'll give me that. There it is. These burn marks? What the? This is black stain, and it's gotta be blood. So, this is where Mikoshiba's body was. It's kinda reddish to me, but okay. Suspicious. Countless footprints. Well, this must have brought a ton of people to such a place. Buildings up high or rubble. Feels like it's been left around without being taken down. What the? It's nice and bright outside. I'm sure glad I came to this abandoned dump before it got dark. Uh huh. A beer can. Steps, it probably leads to the entrance where it was padlocked. There's a lot of money for the <laughs> on the floor and it looks like there's red powder and powder dusted on the surface interesting that error must have indicate must indicate the body's location and I guess the killer would like to have everything lined up This building matches up with the photo, so Mikushiba was alive when he was brought here. Which means this isn't just where his body was dumped, it's where the murder actually happened. Huh? Someone's coming? Crap. The cops just had to come back to the scene now? Uh, uh... Hey. Something. Who's there? State your name and purpose. Uh, well... Get some backup over here. Hey, now wait a second. Can we maybe talk this out? Put your hands up and turn around. Who are you and what were you up to? Takayuki Yagami, the Yagami Detective Agency. Yeah, in Kamurocho. Weren't you the guy at Seiryo yesterday? I could have sworn I saw your face there. Huh? Maybe? The name Possibly. is Watanabe. It depends. Kanagawa PD Division 1. Charm, I'm sure. Hisuki Watanabe. This fella here is Sakurai. Sakurai? What's up? 
So, you think barging into a crime scene was a real bright idea? What? I thought you guys were done here. I figured I could take a look around. Uh-huh. What? You wouldn't happen to be working with Genda Law, would you? Huh? You hear on Shirosaki Sensei's business? Saori Shirosaki, right? The grouchy one. Okay, how'd you know? Well, it started when Mikoshiba's body turned up. Once our investigation kicked off, we found out about that pervert cop in Tokyo. Seems he knew where the body would be. But when we went to go see him, HQ pumped the brakes. They said no interviews on this one. Much to our amusement, we ended up being directed to Shirosaki, the perv's lawyer. So these cops met with Sayori-san to learn about the Eharibis incident. So being that Genda Law Office is in Kamrocho, and you're a Kamrocho detective working your case, that means either the two of you are connected, <laughs> or I'm really losing my touch. Well, you've certainly got my number. Now that you know, how about taking these cuffs off? <laughs> Smooth, but the jury's still out on you, pal. First, you got any thoughts on all that? On anything specific? The part about HQ locking us out of interviewing a horror smart guy. Here we are with a material witness who, it turns out, knew about a corpse rotting away for two months. And those Tokyo chuckleheads just shut us out. Balls even for those tight asses. When he says HQ, I'm assuming that's Tokyo PD. Seems they're stepping on the local police's toes. Any crimes that happen in the Jincho fall on the Kanagawa PD's jurisdiction, not Tokyo's. Which explains why Watanabe here might be ticked off. Ahara was Tokyo PD, so wouldn't they want to protect him? They probably want it handled discreetly. Nah, <sighs> if only it were that simple. This isn't about protection. Oh, they really? could burn real bad if they tried to bury this shit under the rug. Besides, not only is this cop a nasty creep, he's got ties to a fucking murder. If another prefecture blows the lid on that, the top brass may as well kiss their jobs goodbye. Heads will roll. They've got to wash the shit stains off their laundry to keep their asses clean. Yeah, I could see how that makes sense. Anyway, so HQ told us their boys would look into Ahara. What we had to do was hand them our notes on the murder. Can you believe that crap? Like hell we're gonna bend over for them. But look where that's got us. Now nobody's interrogated Ahara. Really? Are Kanagawa and Tokyo PD really fighting over who gets the credit? Don't tell me they're that petty. <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Well, the higher-ups play intel hoarding games, Ahara's just sitting pretty. Shit. The cop's supposed to be chasing down the perps. Instead, here I am with my hands tied, bitching to a PI. So I'm your therapist now. Can you take the cops I was going to take you down to the station and put the squeeze on you. But if you're a half-decent detective, maybe we could collaborate. Oh yeah? Not really. I mean, you came all the way from Kamurocho to sniff around here, right? I highly doubt you found much. But tell me something I don't know and maybe the cuffs will fall off. You proposing a deal? Depends on if what you've got is worth making one. Mm, this is gonna be such a waste of time. But I want some info from these cops myself. Yeah. Listen, hold on, I gotta do something real quick. Okay. There we go. Now, I want some info for these cops myself. Probably best to collaborate with these guys and give them a little more insight. Well... I have this. Okay. How about this? What the hell? Hiro Mikoshima. Was this taken here? Right before he died? Where did you get this? What kind of shit you trying to pull? I could tell you better with the cuffs off. <laughs> You're craftier than I thought. Fine, let him loose. Hey, that actually worked. 
All right, let me get this straight. Right before you met up with this Serio High teacher, a strange woman showed up with this photo? Yeah, I couldn't get a good look at her. But it seems whatever threat she made worked. Sawa-sensei wouldn't say a thing after that. Sawa's the one who supervised Mikoshiba for his student teaching program. I know that. So, this woman you're talking about must have had it in with the culprits. You know, they were working in a group. That's quite a revelation. What makes you so sure about that? Sakurai, show him the photo of the body. And spare Ooh, me I gotta see the body. Nature. I'm sick of this going nowhere. If Hotshot here is gonna look into Ahara for us, we may as well take advantage of it. Oh, I'm Hotshot now. You're the boss, Nabi-san. <sighs> this had to be two months after his death. Body looks pretty decayed. Not to mention all the maggots on him. Miko Shiba was last seen alive two months ago, October 7th, 6.30 a.m. He was talking to his mother as he exited their house back in the city. Since there were no other sightings of him, it's likely he was abducted a short ways from his home. This had to be done by vehicle, as common sense would tell us. So there must have been at least two suspects, a driver and a handler. If it were me, I'd have put three on the job. So that's why you figured it was a group effort. Sounds logical to me. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, according to the autopsy report, they found food in the poor guy's stomach. Based on how digested it was, we can assume he was killed at least an hour after breakfast, putting it around 7.30. Then not long after, he was brought here. His throat was slit with a knife. You get all that hot shot? Yep, I did. So on the day Mikoshiba went missing, he was abducted near his home. And he was killed right here no earlier than 7.30 a.m. And what was our friend Ahara doing at that time? The old perv was walking through Ikebukuro's ticket gates around 7.43 a.m. This was stated in court and corroborated by multiple security tapes. But if that's true, he couldn't possibly have killed Mikoshiba. It's 30 kilometers between here and Ikebukuro. Yeah, that's the meat of his alibi. Yet somehow, he knew Mikoshiba's body would be discovered two months after his arrest, despite being in custody the whole time. Well, there's no doubt he's connected to the killers. If we just put the screws to him, he'd squeal. Damn it, HQ! Why the hell are we out here working the site if it's already been picked clean? All right, Nabe-san. Deep breaths. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, out. In, Do you see why we've out. got to get someone in to talk to Ahara? Hell, beg Shirosaki-sensei for a visit if you have to. HQ can't say squat about his attorney visiting. Hmm. Hell of a cop. We only just met, I'm halfway to becoming his gopher. But then again, I guess I do the same thing. What you said raises some questions of my own, about the crime scene and the body. Oh yeah? Ask away then. Now here's a chance to get some pertinent facts. I needed to ask what evidence the police collected from this scene. So let's put the I noticed the first. burn marks on the floor in the shape of an arrow. What's with that? Somebody lit flares here, the ones that shoot red smoke. It was only a matter of time before the fire department got called, and they're the ones who stumbled on the body. Pretty obvious the culprit set up a smoke signal to make sure the body got found. It probably had the timing all worked out with Ahara so he could predict the body's discovery from maximum impact. And that's exactly what he did, just as the judge handed down the sentence. What would be the point of that, though? <laughs> For all I know, he just wanted to blow everyone's minds. Yeah, really wow the world. Um... Let's ask about the building owner. Doesn't this place have a manager? I'm sure it wasn't always like this. There is a property owner. He's been around Ijincho forever. The building's been deserted for two years. Apparently, there was a padlock to keep the homeless out, but it was long gone by the time they found the body. Broken by the killers, most likely. Okay. Um... 
time of death. How narrow is the window for Mikoshiba's estimated time of death? Based on how digested his breakfast was, he was killed somewhere between 7.30 and noon on the morning of October 7th. Pretty impressed you can narrow it down like that with a two-month-old corpse. Yeah, well, the window gets much bigger if we consider the possibility that the killers forced Mikoshiba to eat. At any point after the kidnapping, they could have made him eat a typical Mikoshiba family breakfast. It's possible. All they had to do was make him say what he usually eats. Good. We're on the same page. That seems like too much now, effort. Now, if we take into account the decomposition of the body, Mikoshiba's estimated time of death actually ranges from 7.30 a.m. on October 7th all the way to the end of that month. So about three weeks. Three weeks? That's a massive gap. Can't we narrow That's it down huge. further? The body's just too decomposed to do that. But expand the time frame all you want. Ihara was in custody through the whole thing. So we couldn't have done the deed. He definitely right. set it up, He spent though. two months behind bars. Hate to think a different crime got him such a strong he had alibi. Set him up, set him up in any case, least. someone else killed Miko Shiba. If we could just get in the same room as him, we'd know who that is. Okay, um... Well, we talked about time of death. Let's do state of the body. What shape was the body in when it was found? Full of maggots and decomposing bad. His hands were zip-tied behind the chair, securing him in place. The cause of death was the throat wound, but before that, they really worked him over. Rough way for the guy to go. Damn. They even broke all his fingers. On both hands. That sounds... painful. Fucked up, right? I'm guessing a Damn professional right. did this. Could be Yakuza, could be Mafia. Take your pick. We've well, got yeah, some mafia. guys checking that angle out too, just to make sure there's no stone left unturned. Okay, let's talk more about the cause of death. What was the victim's cause of death? The news called it a massive hemorrhage. Yup. They slit his throat and let him bleed to death. After tying him to a chair, the killer stood behind him. And lifting his chin with his left hand, his right hand slid the knife. Sounds like you guys have that bit on lockdown, huh? It's one of the few things we're sure of. Oh yeah. The murder weapon. Has the murder weapon been Can't found? I forgot about that. No. There were no weapons at the scene. Real shame. Might be some decisive evidence. So when you said it was a knife, was that a guess based on analyzing the wound? I wouldn't call it a guess. The coroner outright stated that the weapon was a sharp knife-like instrument. Alright. I think we know everything. I think I'm starting to get the picture here. That should be it for questions. Tell me, you detectives out in Camarocho always this hands-on? Sorry, what? I'm saying you guys were quick. We had barely set foot in Serio High, and you already had the run of the place. Hell, you even closed in on that Sawa Sensei and got a meeting with her. I was just lucky to have been there on another case. Is that right? Hey. What? What's wrong? Someone's Somebody's watching us. spying on us with binoculars. No shit? Three men. Thirties, probably. The one with binoculars is wearing a black jacket. I know it's not as cool as mine. Yagami! Sorry. Gotta chase him down. Hey! Wait up! You won't get away! Ooh. Ooh. Aha. Uh -huh. Hold up. Hold on, buddy. I just want to ask you a question. Or two. Or three. Yeah, kicking stuff. Yeah, this is what the last game needed. Ooh. <laughs> Get away from me! 
Can't trick me. Leave me alone. Won't get away. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Hold up. Oh, I missed the bucket. Damn. Uh, come on. Ooh, gotcha. Damn, hot shot. You're quick on your feet. So let's hear why this fool had eyes on us. He claims he just wanted to see the scene for himself. <sighs> It's true. Ask the other two guys with me. They'll be here any minute. Oh, really? So you were here gawking, is that it? <laughs> Better than busting in like you own the place. I thought that was water under the bridge. So, who are you? Why'd you run? I ran because I saw a cop jump out a window and charge at me. What, are you saying you'd stick around if you saw that? <laughs> he thinks you're a cop. Should we get you a badge and a hat? I'd be honored. <laughs> Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Sure, buddy. Kake san, age 30. What do you do for work? Oh, I'm just a professional pencil pusher. Biotech, planning and management. Biotech? Are your other two pals biologists, too? No, uh, one's an investor and the other's a consultant. We all went to high school together. It says here you have a Tokyo address. What brings you to Yokohama? Oh, well, I'm organizing a class reunion uh, in Chinatown. So I came to scope out the location in advance. Yeah, but Chinatown's on the China other side. Town. Yeah. Oh, uh, we thought since we came all the way to Yokohama, we might as well peek at the crime scene. <laughs> Pretty morbid idea, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose. What high school did you all attend? Uh, Kurakawa Academy, a private school in Tokyo. So it's not serious high. Man, are these guys seriously not linked to the crime in any way? Hey! Over here! We'll need to verify your buddy's identification as well. I suggest you all cooperate. Nabi-san! Alright, you jokers are free to go. Appreciate you being so civil. Guess that settles it. We're just dumbass rubberneckers. Damn. That doesn't help <laughs> me in the slightest. Huh? After all you went through chasing him down. I don't mind. I'm out to always swing for the fences. Man, I think yeah, it'll kick well, a few soccer I guess in the process. Music. The guy who goes down swinging is alright in my book. Now that that's settled, give my regards to Shirosaki Sensei. If you get some dirt on Ahara soon. Oh. Well, that was interesting. I'm starting to piece things together. That's good timing for a chat with Sayori-san, actually. But for now, I should head back to Yokohama 99. And then I could give Sayori-san a call. Kissing at each other.
what's happening. You know who did it? Who knows? Could be corporate espionage. Excuse me. Excuse me. Did you just say corporate espionage and wiretapping? Yes, that's right. Our company is currently in crisis mode. Turns out confidential information has been leaking to our competitor. What does that mean? Did you find any bugs? Yeah, actually, we found one by pure accident. And then we hire a detective to sweep the building and he finds five more. Apparently, it's been happening all over Jincho lately. Everyone's talking it, about it on Chatter. Some corrupt detective willing to do all kinds of shady work. Hmm. Really now? The corrupt detectives in town, huh? Maybe I should look into this crooked competition. What does the buzz researcher have to say? Here we go. Right here. Right. Aha, yes. More speed, that's good. Let's learn. Okay. All right. Now that was close. Ah. And that must be the place. So, this is where they find that wild tapper? Already quite a crowd enough here. Is enough. As I've told you, I'm here to locate them, not plant them. Hmm? That sounds like. I'm a detective from Yokohama 99. I picked up on a wiretap signal here, so I came to sweep for it. You're a detective? Who hired you? Uh... Well, detectives have a strict code of client confidentiality, but I admit. This wasn't for an official case, but more my own curiosity, so... Your curiosity? Yeah, that sounds like a likely cover story for a serial bugger, like people have been complaining about. And you definitely do look the part. Well, oh dear. Huh? Uh oh. Sukumo is about to get pinched. Hey! Hey, Sukumo. Yagamishi! Oh, ah! <laughs> Ha. What timing, Yagamishi? I can really use your backup. This security card has accused me of plaguing the whole town with bugs. You know this guy? Yep. Yes, we've been friends for a long time. Just as you said, he's a detective. And he's definitely not the kind to resort to such shady jobs. I'm not sure I should be trusting you either. I'm not trustworthy, huh? A quick flash of this should take care of it. Yeah. My name's Takayuki Yagami. I'm a lawyer. If you're gonna treat my friend like a criminal without any proof, this badge might have to come into play at some point. Huh? You're a lawyer? <laughs> well, lawyer's badging for him. I don't see a problem here. Sorry about that. Have a nice day.
I owe you one. Oh, my, my. Well, thank you for your assistance, Yagamishi. Truly, you rescued me in the nick of time. Hey. What was that all about, anyway? That wasn't the first time I've heard a wiretap been causing a fuss around here. Uh. Indeed. Supposedly, there's a detective in each Jinsho who's been offering his services for a wide variety of illegal purposes. Hmm? Yeah, I heard something about a corrupt detective earlier. So he's the wiretapper that security guard was hoping to catch? Sure. Presumably so. This individual's performed some rather unsavory duties for clients. Assisting stalkers and loan sharks in finding their targets, for example. Hmm. This guy sounds pretty awful. Any legit detective would turn those clients down. I wholly agree. The notion of allowing this man to tarnish the title of detective did not sit well with me. Hence, I was driven to the appeal to investigate. <laughs> but I just wound up being accused of performing the deed I was attempting to stop. Goodness, whatever can I do? <laughs> uh. Maybe try cutting out the sly grins and the conspirator conspiratorial giggles when you're on the job. Hmm. Mm, but I can't help grinning when dealing with such fascinating subjects. Oh, how about instead, I have you continue the investigation for me. You can use this to track down clandestine signals invented by yours truly. Huh? huh? You want me to do it? <laughs> yes. It appears that I am destined to bear the cross of this suspicious individual, but you certainly have no worries of that. Huh. Um, uh, I don't know about that. Yep. Well, I certainly do. You've got an ace up your sleeve, an attorney's badge you can flash in a pinch. So, that being said, please take this with you. And you said this thing picks up clandestine signals? Precisely. It can detect anything emitting a suspicious signature from up to a few tens of meters away. Bugs, spy cams, the like. There's a signal coming from behind this building. Perhaps you should look for its source. Gotcha. Alright. Behind the building. Got it. I'll give it a try. Hmm. Looking light indicates the detector's proximity to the signal emitting device. A blink green when correctly facing the direction of the source. Move in that direction to uncover the source. Access the detector app from gadgets. Back of the building, huh? Yagamishi, have you tracked it down yet? I'd start with going behind the building and arrive with you. And you might want to hurry. Apparently, this corrupt detective is very slick to reclaim his tech once the job is done, or even if he suspects someone is onto him. I see. I have to get on it then. Oh, I have to go this way. There we go. Ah, it's around this car. This car's giving off a weird signal. Huh? 
Hmm. Perhaps a bug of some sort's been planted in the car. Hmm. Interested in my car, are you? Excuse me. Sorry about that. I'm Takayuki Yagami, a detective. Oh, a real life detective! I'm Motoya Ogami. I'm a prosecutor. Oh. Oh, so you're a public prosecutor. To be honest, I've loved mystery since I was little. Detectives are so fascinating, but I never thought I'd actually meet one like this. <laughs> hmm. Is that so? Well, Mr. Detective, what business do you have with my car? Ah! Are you in a case? Is there a mystery here right now? Well, there seems to be a numbers. A series of illicit snooping activities going on around town lately, so I'm looking into the matter. And for some reason, your car is emitting a rather strange signal. Oh, do you think my car is bugged? Mm, that depends. Do you ever have conversations in there that you wouldn't want others to hear? Yeah, certainly. Discussing the day's upcoming trials with my secretary and such. But could that be a reason someone would want to bug my car? Yep. Mm, it is possible. May I search it for you? Oh, by all means. Huh. Well, the signal's coming from this stuffed animal. It really was in his car. Ogami-san, I think I found the source of this signal. The the Masuyama-kun's. Huh? Who is that lady? Uh, this belongs to my secretary, Masuyamaku. Huh? Oh, crap. Damn it. You shall pay for your part in this sordid crime. Out of the way, nerd. I take kick out and talking classes every week. I'm serious. <laughs> and I am Makoto Sukumo. Master of the Yagami style, and I shall not hold back, even against a lady as yourself. Yeah. Whoa! You know Kung Fu? Just my luck. <laughs> no. Excellent bluff, Sukumo. You've really gotten good at that. Your form was perfect. <laughs> I've seen you fight enough times for the look for it to rub off at least. All right, Masuyama-san. Let's hear it. <gasps> What's the meaning of this, Masuyama-kun? I'm sorry. I've, uh... I've been paid off. What? By whom? Was it that one defendant's lawyer? Yes. He claimed to be working for them. He also said he's a detective. A detective? Hmm. Probably the villainous detective who's become the talk of the town. Could you describe this person for us? I don't know what he looks like. We've only talked over the phone and he didn't video chat with me. Oh, what about his voice? Or speaking mannerisms then? Any noticeable dialect? I'm, I'm not sure. He was real quiet and kept his speaking to a minimum. I do think he's a male, though. Did you record the conversation? No, I was instructed not to. Damn! If only we had some sort of evidence we could use. Excuse me. Did he happen to give you his name? No, but he said he runs the illegal detective agency. Okay, that's just too obvious. Wow, pretty brazen approach. He sure doesn't beat around the bush, does he? Bribery, Masuyama-kun? How could you do this? Once he offered me the three million, I couldn't help myself. Heaven help me! What am I to do with you? <laughs> nice work. We even got compensated for our efforts. That Masuyama girl is definitely getting canned. If not jail time on top of it. Well, she certainly could have thought of that before she bugged the boss. And wow. 
But what I guess we learned about a corrupt detective in town. We didn't find the guy, but he seems busy enough that we're probably gonna have to crack at him. Yep. I agree. Eugene Cho seems to be suffering the strangest plague of illicit spying. And I believe my handy dandy detective could serve as a perfect antidote to this plague. In other words... Are you suggesting we comb the whole city for bugs with that thing? Hmm. Well, that sounds like an awful lot of unpaid work. In that case, you should try consulting the buzz researcher first to help pinpoint where you are to search. Anything that gives us strong signals, such as wireless work and spy cameras, are prone to causing interference. Televisions and phones all suffer from some sort of noise when in the vicinity of covert broadcasting devices. Oh. Ah, interesting. So if I filter for noise or something along those lines, there's a chance I could track down a bug whenever the posts are appearing. Indeed, there's a very real possibility that there are victims on the other ends of those bugs and spy cameras. I see. I see. It makes sense. Okay, I'll give it a try soon. <laughs> Best of luck. As upstanding detectives, it's our duty to take down this villainous investigator. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good voice for Sukumo. Well, here we go again. Oh, now it's near there? Okay. Ow. Take that. Really, guys? Actually, let's see here. I'll do that. Oh, I could have gotten that. Damn. Okay. I'll wait then. Actually. Okay, so it's around the agency. Good to know. Oh, hey, sorry. No, I was just about to call you. I was gonna say I've got some leads on the murder. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know a Detective Watanabe, would you? From Kanagawa PD? Oh, yes. He came asking me about the harassment case. Apparently he couldn't interview Ahara, so he got us instead. Wanna know why that is? Apparently Tokyo PD suspects Ahara might be linked to the murder in some way. And since they don't want Kanagawa stealing the show, they're blocking their investigators out. That does make sense. Not in a bureaucratic way. By the way, when's your next appointment with Ahara? As soon as we're ready, honestly. Did you want to come along? Yeah, I was just about to ask that. But I'd like to do a bit more research beforehand. I want to know exactly how Ahara's crime played out. Funny you should say that. Oshino-kun just told me he's going to re-inspect the crime scene tomorrow. 
He said it'd be less than one hour's movement from Ikebukuro all the way to Shinjuku, where he was caught. No kidding. Okay. Then I ought to go with. If that's the case. Yeah, I should do Hold some investigating of my own. Okay. Yagami-san, it's me, Hoshino. Oh, hey, hey, I'm Hoshino. So What's up, buddy? Me out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stoked to be there. Oh, and could you bring the statements from Mahara's arrest with you? It'd be a huge help if you could walk me through what happened on site. You got it. We'll be starting from Ikebukuro Station, so just meet me there tomorrow. Will do. Okay. See you then. I could do that. I'm not gonna deal with the rest tomorrow. I think it's time to recharge. Okay, well, I'll crash. <sighs> I need to meet up with Hoshin Akun on Ikebukuro Station. Probably best to take a taxi. So, I took a taxi. I think we just one right here. Okay, see that sign right there? Ehara was leaning on that before the incident. Okay. Yep, just like that. He was standing around searching for a victim. Ihara's the man in the cap and sunglasses. That's him deciding who to attack. Damn, looking at it now, he is pretty suspicious. So, Ihara was lingering at the platform a while, huh? Yeah, he walked past the ticket gate at 7.43 a.m. This was confirmed by the security tapes as well as when he swiped his transit card. After that, he wandered the platform an entire hour ogling women. A whole he spent hour? that long choosing a target? Yeah. What a picky Sick, man. isn't it? Then the security camera that caught him would be... that one? That's right. Minkyupa Kuno is pretty famous for its sheer amount of foot traffic. In a station like this, the cameras almost never have a blind spot. Anyhow, at 9.06 a.m., Ehara finally honed in on his would-be victim. Then he boarded her train, which was departing for Shinjuku. She's the one in the pink cardigan and white skirt? Yeah, Yui Mamiya, an office worker and mother of a six-year-old boy. The two of them show up on the train's interior cam as well. According to the victim's statement, Ehara began by rubbing her posterior with the back of his hand. But it didn't stop there. After that, he put his hand up her skirt. <sighs> Pretty sickening. Yeah. I'm assuming he targeted someone shy, thinking she wouldn't resist. Makes me angry just thinking about it. The victim stated she was too scared to call for help, meaning she endured this for six minutes until the train reached its stop in Shinjuku. Can you send what you just showed me to my phone? Sure. Now let's head to Shinjuku Station. Then we can watch as the jerk gets busted. Even if we did defend him in court, an asshole's still an asshole. Ain't that the truth? Looks like we're getting close to Shinjuku. The train's pretty light right now, but it was packed during the crime, right? Oh yeah, the car occupancy at that time of day can easily reach 180%. 180? And Ahara should have been standing roughly where I am. Oh yeah, that actually makes sense. Japan loves its trains. So, is there anything I can conclude from looking around? Hmm. I thought I heard they were dating, but from what Genda Sensei tells me, he doesn't really got anywhere. Hey. This footage was recorded by a security camera in the train. 
And I'm standing roughly where I hollow was. Suspicious. A security camera that records the train's interior. These were installed to deter train brokers, or at the very least, identify them. Ehara and Mamiya-san both exited the train and got onto the platform here. But right before that, Mamiya-san suddenly grabbed Ehara's wrist and yanked his hand out from under her skirt. That's when she got a good look at her assailant. So without a doubt, she saw it was him. Yes, and there were also traces of her garments on his hand during evidence analysis. Anyway, after being grabbed, Ehara wrenched himself free and took off at a sprint. See, here he gets off the train and bolts across the platform. And Mamiya-san chases after him, asking people around her for help. Ah, uh, this is what they kept looping on TV. Yeah. And honestly, with all this evidentiary footage, defending him in court was a lost cause. Was there any security footage that wasn't aired on TV? Sure, take a look around you. There's more than just one camera pointed at us. They're practically everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. As for what I was saying earlier, Ihara was finally tackled right in front of those stairs. Oh right, I have a diagram of the platform to show you. So Ihara gets off the train here, and then gets apprehended here. How far apart is that? Roughly a hundred meters. Both he and the victim were weaving their way through the crowd. The whole scene was very chaotic. Even after Ahara was caught, the train was stalled 20 minutes until the area was deemed safe. Hey, you think we could get the positions of all these cameras and where they're pointing penciled in? Good idea. Let's check each camera's position as we walk over to where Ahara was detained. Okay. That's where he got tackled, so if you could let me know whenever you see a camera. I can mock it up on our diagram here. Oh, there's one camera. Suspicious. I kind of ran up in the opposite direction. I don't need this camera. What the? Check that one off. Hey. This one. Looks like we checked all the nearby cameras. Let's go up a little further now. There's one. Suspicious. There's one. There it is. There it is, that one. Looks like we checked all the nearby cameras. Let's move on. Suspicious. There's that one. Hey. Got a camera. Suspicious. Let me see uh -huh. one. Found a camera. Hmm. Did I 
good this one? Oh, I got that one. Suspicious. Got that one. Okay, looks like we got all the cameras. Our diagram is now complete. Well, this diagram represents the station at the time of the groping. And how I got off the train at around 9 12 a.m. on October 7th. From the boarding area, he ran in the direction of the arrow. Then he was tackled by concerned citizens. Now we'll pencil in the camera locations and what directions they're pointing. So each of the orange areas represents the security camera's field of view. Hey. <laughs> Gripping your heart's hand, but he broke three of you. Then he tried to run away. What the? Does the dotted arrow part of the arrow indicate a blind spot? In between the cameras? If so, there won't be any footage of Ayala running through here. <laughs> this arrow shows the path Ayala and the victim took as they ran across from the platform to Ayala's point of capture. What the? This is where how I got tackled by witnesses. Multiple others on the scene documented this with their smartphone cameras. And this is what they call eyewitness footage. I bet the TV stations show up for this sort of thing. Uh huh. So this was the general situation when Ahara committed his crime. What do you think, Yagami-san? Anything of note? Do you think Ahara and Mamiya-san were riding the train pretty frequently? Oh yeah, Mamiya-san commuted by train. She was here every weekday. Same goes for Ahara, actually, but he was off that day. Supposedly he was going to see his wife, even though they're separated. Interesting. Hmm. Did he ever say why he wandered around the platform for an hour? He said the thought of his wife had him flustered and he couldn't force himself to board the train. He always had an excuse ready for anything you asked him, including the harassment charges. He pled not guilty, but the evidence said otherwise. There wasn't a single argument we could make in court to establish reasonable doubt. Safe to say he did it, but on the same day, he knew his son's bully would be murdered in Ijincho. <sighs> Pretty clear it wasn't a spontaneous need to grab some ass. I agree. It's almost like all the commotion around the harassment might have been planned out. Right? Maybe everything was. Even down to getting captured. Yeah. You really played everyone by turning harassment into an alibi for murder. No matter how much evidence points to him as a killer, you can deny it with complete immunity. This is getting crazier by the minute. At the very least, he had something to do with it. Some connection. But I can't imagine he'll talk. Whatever his plan is, it's pretty clear Ahara is committed. To what? Getting revenge for his son? I think so. Who do you think his accomplices could be? Ahara is a veteran cop. Think maybe he knows how to hire an actual assassin? If so, he could have just paid for his revenge, right? Sure. But assassins cost an arm and a leg. He wasn't rich before all this, was he? No. He barely scraped up enough to cover his lawsuit against the school. Not so. I've gone to the scene of both the murder and the train groping. And that should be the place all the places I need to see. No? Huh? Hey, it's Shiosaki. What's up, Sari-san? I'm scheduling an interview with Ahara tomorrow at the Tokyo Detention Center. We'll take a taxi from Genda's if that all works for you. Sounds good, but I need to head back to Ijincho for now. Something you forgot to do? Yeah, it involves Ahara's motive, which would be without a doubt his son's suicide. So I want to confirm if Mikoshiba really bullied the kid, and the best person to ask happens to be down in Ijincho. Alright, then I'll let you get to it. Cool. Then I'll see you cool, tomorrow. Cool. Alright. Time to do some more investigating. I guess just asking that question. Mikoshiba. Ihara. Yeah, I think I saw everything though. 
was to see at the, each of the crimes. No, that's left is getting sour since the talk. The key will be learning what happened with Ahara's son four years ago. So let's go find out. I can't get my skateboard to trigger. Come on, game, let me skate. Is that so much to ask for? to school. You got anything for me? Got a minute? No, not for you. I really have nothing more to say. What if I told you it's looking more and more likely Ihara-san had a hand in Mikoshiba's death? Well, it doesn't concern me. Ihara-san believes Mikoshiba tormented Toshiro-kun so badly that he took his own life. But neither the third-party investigation nor the courts were on his side. So what's the truth here? You know, don't you? <sighs> what really happened between Mikoshiba and Toshiro-kun? Why won't you tell me the truth? Why do you keep asking? I said I don't know! I'm going to the detention center tomorrow to get some answers out of Ahara-san. <sighs> what? I saw where Mikoshiba was murdered. He endured no shortage of cruelty before he died. They tortured him, you know. They broke all his fingers before they slid his throat. No. Yeah, that's right. I know I'm putting him through a lot right now, but she's connected to this too. She's got information I need to know before I go see Aihara. And somehow Ihara-san knew Mikoshiba would be killed on the day he got caught for groping. It's like he did it to prove he had nothing to do with the murder. But maybe that wasn't his real objective at all. Huh? I think he wanted to signal that he'd finally avenged his son. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. If I'm gonna face him tomorrow, I can't go in without some ammunition. So, four years ago, did Mikoshiba bully Toshiro-kun or not? That's all I want to know. Simple yes or no question. My answer won't change. There's no evidence Miko Shibakun did anything wrong. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Take a look at this. That's... Toshiro Ehara, your student. Imagine that he's listening to what you're saying now. If you can look at him and say Miko Shiba played no part in his death, I'll leave you alone. 
In fact, you'll never hear a word from me again. So which is it? Yeah, come on. You know something. Four years ago, not long after I'd transferred here to teach English, that's when it started. I was trying my best to get acclimated, and I was finally on a first-name basis with everyone. One day, after school, I was out on the roof taking a break, when Toshiro-kun suddenly ran by. I called out to him to ask what was wrong, but he shushed me and kept running. I saw he had a bloody nose. Moments later, Mikoshiba-kun showed up. He was looking for him. I told him I hadn't seen him. Toshiro-kun's face told me everything I needed to know. So Mikoshiba was bullying him after all. I mean, yes. obviously. Toshiro-kun told me this later on. Whenever oh, like he'd leave school with Mikoshiba-kun and his friends, they force him to hand over money. At first, they try to pass it off as a joke. They said since he lowered the class average on tests, he ought to buy them all drinks as an apology. And Mikoshiba-kun... He was having too much fun with it to stop. He started offering tutoring sessions to Toshiro-kun. Only so he and his crew could extract their tuition from him. They'd even break into his house while his mother was at work and take the money she left him for dinner. And if he couldn't pay, they'd beat him up at school or make him grovel in the bathroom. Didn't anybody see what was really happening? The teachers either saw nothing or turned a blind eye. Few students knew about it, though. Anyway... I ended up relaying everything Toshiro-kun had told me to those boys' homeroom teacher. Mind you, this teacher had tenure, title, and years of experience under his belt. Do you know what he told me? He said not to cause a commotion because those boys were about to graduate. Why does that not surprise me? Yeah, of course. To be honest, of course you would. It was hard to paint such an outwardly model student in a negative light. There was also no hard evidence to support Toshiro Kun's story. But someone still should have stepped in to help. If only I'd understood that at the time. You tried. The only thing I tried was to keep an eye out for him. Making sure he wasn't alone, things like that. But unfortunately, that wasn't good enough. On the first morning of the third trimester, Toshiro-kun tied a towel to his doorknob and hung himself in his room. And that's when you confronted Mikoshiba, right? You asked him point blank if he'd bullied him. I did. So, four years ago... Sour Sensei stood up to Mikoshiba for his terrible behavior. Then why has she kept that to herself for so long? I mean, it's obviously guilt. Come on, Yagami. Mikoshiba kun pretended to know nothing. He was more careful, shaken even, from then on. In all honesty, when I heard a third party committee was investigating, I was hoping the truth would come out. Students were asked to fill out an anonymous questionnaire, and many of them wrote down exactly what they saw. Hold on. Didn't the court end up declaring there was no substantial evidence of bullying? How could they have said that with those questionnaires on hand? First of all, the committee never interviewed anyone directly. Those questionnaires were the only proof of anything. And the teacher of those boys was the one who collected them. Each time he came across any mention of bullying, he'd toss that questionnaire out. Also, he wouldn't get blamed in the end for ignoring the warning signs. So then the committee was pointless. A few students did speak up about the bullying online, but their posts weren't ah, much so to go on. A cover up. Toshiro kun's parents were completely caught off guard. His mother worked through the day, and his father lived all the way in Tokyo. 
That made it that much easier for the teacher to cover up all the evidence of bullying. He made that statement without even consulting the principal or the chairman. So, right before Miko Shippakun graduated, the committee presented their findings. That there was no evidence of bullying. The conclusion you've heard over and over. What the hell? In Japan, 300 children commit suicide every year, across all grades. Less than 3% are proven to be linked to bullying. Toshiro-kun's case ended up like that, too. But Ehara-san wasn't satisfied with those findings. So he sued Serio High, demanding compensation for Toshiro-kun's death. As the trial dragged on, I was eventually called to the witness stand. Of course, my intention was to let everything I knew out into the open. But before that could happen, that damn teacher came with the school's attorney to see how I would testify. They didn't want you making them look bad, huh? Of course not. That's when I first learned what he did with those incriminating questionnaires. They had no choice but to reveal everything to me, to try and sway me to their side. I guess they were just that desperate. After all, I was the only adult who Toshiro-kun confided in. I don't think he'd spoken to his parents about it once. So yes, that's why there was never any objective evidence of bullying. It wasn't like I had a mind to record our conversations. And I hadn't personally witnessed it either. The school attorney saw fit to remind me that the law says innocent until proven guilty. And if I couldn't produce tangible evidence, then I shouldn't be accusing Miko Shippakun. So it was witness tampering? That is, they coerced you into false testimony? <sighs> yes. Yeah. It must have been incredibly hard on you. What I should have done was told the truth regardless. But what else could I have really done for him? Some days I just don't know. As much as I've tried to convince myself I did everything I could for him, I can never fully believe it. So what happened to the teacher who covered all this up? He transferred to another school. Got to think he's still standing at a podium somewhere. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Even so. I don't have the right to place the blame solely on him. Wait. Well, in this story, did Ahara definitely found out that Mikoshiba was a bully? It wasn't clear on the trial whether he could really bring himself to kill a person. Maybe, but in that case, Mikoshiba's bullying of Toshiro, or those questionnaires getting discarded. Have you ever told anyone else? No. I've been silent. Yagami-san. You know what? What? Back when I was a student in high school, I witnessed bullying firsthand. There was this kid. My classmates pushed him too far. And one day, he just jumped off the roof. Off the roof? By some miracle, he survived the fall. And he's been in a coma for the last 13 years. Nobody knows if he'll ever wake up. His name is Mitsuru, and he may never open his eyes to the world again. His mom watches him, but she works full time. She's a higher up in the government. I'm sorry to hear it. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it. But all he said was, don't overdo it. Wow, what a douche. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. Ah, <laughs> uh, he got it. He deserved it. For poor Toshiro-kun, nobody was held responsible at all. And that includes me. But if anyone was going to take responsibility for that, Mikoshiba should have been first in line. I'm sure Ahara-san must have thought the same thing. You know what I wanted to be as a kid? I was so innocent, I wanted to be a teacher. And after Mitsuro-kun's tragedy, I felt practically obligated. And still, 
I just let history repeat itself. <laughs> I think I have a clearer picture about what happened four years ago. And now I'm ready to interview a horror. And I should go back to Yokohama 99 and get some rest. Tomorrow is a big day. Back to Yokohama 99. for some people. There we go. What a waste. A dog? Mm -hmm. hmm? What's up with this dog? Hey, what's wrong? You lose your owner? Huh? Well, Yagamishi, it appears you finally met the infamous detective dog of Ijinsho. Hmm? Shall we the- what? 
What's been getting around town of an odd dog who apparently wanders the streets, looking for cases to solve? Whenever he catches the scent of a mystery or a crisis, he calls out to nearby people, alerting them of a nearby incident. <laughs> he actually stops by here rather often. It's almost as if, as if he knows this is a detective agency. Hmm. Seriously? This dog does that? Yes. For the past few months now, he seems to take his self-appointed position quite seriously. He kinda sounds like Amasawa. By the way. Why is he wandering around town though? There's a caller, so he's obviously not just a stray. Sure. Ah, uh, therein lies the mystery of this dog. He's very well trained, and a perfect specimen of health. No one's seen him rooting around, rooting around in garbage or anything. So, based on this information, it's clear he has someone taking care of him. I see. And the mystery chasing dog's a bit big mystery himself, huh? Hmm? Hmm? A leash. Something wrong, boy? Wait. Oh, he's picked up the scent of a mystery. I believe he wants you to follow him, Yagabishi. Huh. Right. Um. Am, am I supposed to hold a leash? <laughs> <laughs> he, he just has proper leash manners is all. Well, I guess if he really is that smart, I can see why he's walking around freely. What? What is it? You want me to take you for a walk? <laughs> Yagamishi, I believe he's requesting you to partner up with him. <laughs> Are you willing to accept the case? I already have my hands full of the MRC. Now I have to take care of this detective dog too? What is going on? Okay, okay, I'll take the case. Where's the trouble, boy? Or girl? Well, I guess Who's it's a good boy. boy. Okay, lead the way. <laughs> Who's a good boy? You're not just taking me to get food, are you? Hey! Guess I'm not taking point on this case. This way, huh? Yeah, let's go, dog. Which way are we going? Doing great. Oh, the job center. Okay. Got something? Ah, oh, damn! I'm gonna get that thing. Really? A post? That's not a crime. This way, huh? Hmm? Yeah? Is this where you're leading me, huh, boy? Mm. Mm, this is an issue. You don't know how to get in touch with her? Uh. Uh, nope. She just said to wait here. That she'd be back for me soon. Oh dear, this is not good. Excuse me. Excuse me, is there some sort of trouble? Mm? And you are? Takayuki Yagami, a detective from Kamurocho. <laughs> ah, what a cute doggy. Um. Is something the matter here? Mm. Well, he's been waiting in front of the facility for a while now. Because his mother told him to wait here. What? Facility? Yes. Our orphanage's main facility is upstairs. I see. Mm, and you say he was left here. And the mother doesn't seem to be returning. Okay. Yes, and uh, he actually had this envelope on him when I first came out to ask if anything was wrong. Here you go. Some kind of a letter? Hmm. It says... Please take care of Shusuke-san, hmm. chan Ah, uh, she. <laughs> He's a very good boy. He loves banana ice cream. He means the world to me. At the very, at the very least, I was hoping to know why he is here. Now, being dropped off without any hint of knowing the truth. That's no way to treat a person. Hey, Shusuke-kun, right? How long's your mom been gone? Like. 
an hour. If that's true, there's a slight chance she could still be nearby. Yakumi-san, was it? You're a detective, aren't you? Could you possibly find his mother? I really would like to, but... Say, did your mom mention anything at all about where she might be going? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I put her name. What's her name? Mika. Shibuya Mika. Not much I could do with just that, though. Hmm? What is it? Are you interested in a lot of boy? Oh, you think you could track her down by the scent of the envelope? Uh, the doctor's much of a detective as Sukuma made him sound like. Sound like he is. I suppose I should let him take a crack at it. Alright. Track the scent for me, will you? you give me a nice little sniff. Got something? Doing great. This way, huh? Doing great. Got something? <laughs> Come on, Micha, Mikan chan. Time to get in. Shoes get good, was it? You gotta thank that doe for his sake, right? And you'll promise you send him his show, right? <laughs> of course we will, Mikan chan. Once you pay back what you owe, that is. And no funny business on your end either. Shadow boy? Huh? What's your problem? Go sniff out a boat somewhere else. Shoo. Bye bye now. Excuse me. You're Shusuke kun's mom, right? Mikan Shibuya? How, how do you know that? I came looking for you after this dog led me to your son. I didn't expect to run into this guy too. But now I see what's going on. A dog led you? My guess is, you owe someone enough money that this scumbag's trying to drag you out to work some unsavory job for the rest of your life. A brother or something, probably. What? I, I mean... <sighs> happens all the time on camera channel where I work. Ah, uh, what? The fuck is your dear asshole? If you're getting in the way of company business, don't be surprised when you end up dead. I already heard she's. I heard you say she owes you. How much does she owe you by now? What interest are you charging? She borrowed 500 grand. But interest? That's 9 mil. Planning on covering it or something? No way. Okay, she. That's an exorbitant rape. I knew I was looking at a loan shark from the first moment. I think I'll be leaving with Mikan Chasan now. Do I need to knock you out first, or no? Fuck you, man. We got her first. You know what? I'm just gonna ice you and your mud. So, you want to talk about how treating people as property is illegal? What? What? I'm a fully licensed lawyer, and I'll be happy to take your case pro bono. Why don't we sit down for a little... chat? Oh, shit. Screw this. I'm out of here. No, is... is that it? <sighs> Not to get so bad, Mikan-san. Huh? Shusuke kun still waiting for you at the orphanage. He thought you were going to come back for him. Uh, they said I didn't go with that man. They they chose Shusuke off to someone. So that's why. In other words, 
It made you panic enough to agree to do what they said. Eh. Yes, I... You're so terrible. No way. Well, that's the sort of thing you won't shock to do. They figure out how to pressure you enough that you break. Next thing you know, they own you outright. Excuse me. I know a good lawyer on Kamachur would be happy to help you. Should I reach out to her for you? Please, yes! Mom, you're back! I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Good, boy. good job, boy. Hmm, but... What are you doing, really? You got the whole town talking about you now. Don't you have a home? Where's your home? Jeez, boy. I wish you could tell me. Hmm? If only it was like Dr. Doolittle or someone. Anyway. Hmm, I'm a seller. Run, Paul. The old mystery author? What? That's her dog? I mean, that actually makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> I should have known. So, you're Amasawa's dog, huh? Seriously? Just had to break away from the family and make a name for yourself, huh? Mm, can't say I'm surprised, though. Well, they say pets and their owners grow more and more alike over the years, but this is... Whatever. I should get in touch with Amasawa. Yagami-san! Uh, Yagami-san! Oh, so, so sorry I did your Ranpo. Hey, Ranpo, you listen. No one will enough on your own. How many times have I told you? Ugh. You'll never behave, will you? Nope. Uh, he seems like a good boy to me. Aren't you? Yeah, look at that. That's a good doggy. <laughs> Yagami-san. Well, he does seem rather fond of you. Runpo's usually more wary of strangers. It can't be. Maybe he sees you more as a professional partner, Yagami-san. Huh? Really? You think so? Yes. Indeed I do. In fact, I've been raising him as a proper investigatory partner ever since he was a puppy. Huh? Huh? What do you mean by that? Um... Well, um... When I was little, I read a book about a detective girl whose dog helped her crack the case. The moment I finished that book, I started trading Ranpo to help me solve mysteries. <laughs> so you're why he's always sniffing out trouble? Yes. Yes. And it seems he's gotten quite hooked on it. Whenever he smells an incident brewing, he's off and running. We try to keep him inside the house. But he's just too good at slipping out. Gee, I wonder why. Does that mean... Uh, is that okay? Like, with the animal shelters and police? <sighs> no, it very much is not. Run post has been caught several times by both groups, and I have to be the one to pick him, picks him up and apologizes every time. He's becoming quite a familiar face at the shelter, unfortunately. But he doesn't bite, and even tries to help people out, so they're a lot more lenient with him than they're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you two really are alike, huh? What? What? You think so? Hey. You know, you really did train him well. Think you'd be willing to help me again if we ran across each other in town? <sighs> well, um, I suppose so. You could always try calling for him at least. If he's around and feels like helping. You make it lucky. And you're living your best life, aren't you, boy? Ah! Runpo, no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Yagami-san. I have to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with the case. Maybe I should try calling for Runpo the next time I need his nose for investigation. No, there's no guarantee he'll come running. Call you for your canine by accessing the dog app.
There you are. Who's a good boy? Yeah. Good boy. Nice. Okay, I'm going home now. <laughs> I wonder if I could customize my dog. No, oh, that's just items. Yeah, look at that. Look at all those dogs. Let's get... What do I see it? Oh, here it is. There we go. Okay. Uh. All right then. Having a party? Hey, welcome back. Care for a drink? Y'all give me some. Heads up. Now make yourself at home. Not that you haven't already. <laughs> Who me? Well, whatever do you mean? Kuana's fine. He just swung by to have a chat with you, man. Not that I mind hanging out over beers and shogi. Kaito's a gentleman and a scholar. I like your style. What do you want with me? Check it out, Yakami-san. You're only here to get to the bottom of that Hiro Mikushiba kid's murder, right? That's gotta be the reason the Yokohama Liomang attacked you, isn't it? All I'm saying is that you've gotta cut me in, man. Thanks, but I've got enough help. So some hotshot detective strolls into town and tries to leave the local guy out in the cold? <laughs> no offense, but that's not gonna fly. You gonna play your turn? Just finish your game and go home already. When you benefit from someone who knows the scene, you know, I can get you anywhere in a gene show above or below ground. Aren't you expensive? I'll give you a first time customer price. I'm not about to sit here and let some outsider swoop in and take all the credit alone. And that means I guess I'm gonna chill here until you give me the nod. It's Sukumo and Sukiura's place as far as I'm concerned. Not even my call to make. I welcome having more company. The more the merrier. That'll be the agency motto. I don't really care. Such a nice office. I'm gonna love it here. <laughs> uh, Yagamishi, guess what? The internet picked up on the Ahara link to Mikoshiba. Huh? The trending sentiment is that he killed him in an act of vengeance for his son. They've already figured that part out? Damn. See for yourself. Here, check it out. Son of a bitch student teacher should burn in hell for bullying a kid all the way to suicide. 
Mikoshiba was a damn psychopath. Ehara is the vigilante groper. That's not even the trolls. The vigilante so groper. So the news is blowing up on the net, huh? In the internet terms, this is only the first spark that could ignite into a fire. Not even what I'd call viral. Then who's lighting the spark? The people responsible for Mikoshiba's murder? I'll have to go down a few more rabbit holes before I can make that call, I'm afraid. Gotcha. That said, some posts are kind of suspicious. This one here, for instance. Ehara totally called the location of the body at his trial. The fact that he did that never really even went public, as far as I can tell. It was kept off the record? When Ehara got arrested, the cop turned Groper story and his sexual battery charges were huge news. It was all the media could talk about. But by the time his trial rolled around, the news had already moved on. His guilty verdict barely made a blip. Fellas, I told you I wanted to be kept in the loop on this stuff. You saying Mikoshiba had more than one killer? And where are they now? You think these lunatics are still hanging around Ijincho? It's been over two months already, man. If they were here, they're probably long gone by now. Another peaceful day in Ijincho, right? Rock. Check outside. It's the Leo Mon. Ah, the white mask take it. Let's Mons. go, Chuck. I'll catch you later. <laughs> not bad. You're not getting away this time. Guy. Get away. Oop. That all you got. Well. Come on, come on. I almost got you. You won't get away. What? I should have jumped that. Take off the mask. Yeah, because it's like you got something to hide. Forward, Eugene Cho is closed. You won't be coming back. Ooh, night I'm hash. Tesso. For what it's worth, I'm an officer candidate of the Yokohama Leomon. 
Yeah, funny, you fucking funny, you funny Krugel wannabe ass. I hear you took out some of my masked boys the other day. Oh, you mean those guys who thought they could sneak up on me in the afternoon? Maybe if you hadn't resisted at the time, you'd be in a lot less pain than you're about to be in the near future. Who's paying you to try to take me down? This is a job that came down from the top of the org. I don't know who hired us, and to be honest, I don't give a shit either. But... But... Ripping up a kick-ass detective like you sure sounds like a good time. Oh, really? None of you guys make a move! I want to see if the rumors are true. So I get first taste. Show me what you got. Kagame! Dodge him. Maybe I can. Ah. Ah. Two button. No, oh, that's not good. One more hit. There we go. That's more like it. Yeah. Tonight, aren't we, Kaito-san? Yeah, my bad. Had to punch my way through a few guys. Hey, you gotta run for it. If you stick around, it's not gonna matter how many lives you've got. Yeah, but if I run now, who's gonna pay for Tsukumo's window then? Huh? Uh. For fuck's sake, I'll just pay for it. <laughs> Get out of there. Yeah, what a bro. We got a deal. Okay, let's go. 
Ah, oh, shit, I need help. Yeah, let's try one of these. Really? <laughs> like that could block me. I can use this. There we go. 
That's better. Are we done here? Yagami! Yeah? You want something? Uh, what was it? Tesso? Just want to say, I'm impressed. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to take out all these guys, to be honest. Uh, thanks. But if you're feeling generous, how about you tell me who hired you? <laughs> Didn't I say this before? I got no interest in doing that. Well, really? Can you do me a favor and turn down the job next time, maybe? Yeah, right. If the request comes through again, I'm taking it. Simplest solution for you is to get the hell out of town. Me and my big mouth. Just go already. Hey, not bad, man. A lot of young folks look up to Tesso, so gaining his respect is gonna have some perks. All I want to know is if the view mom are no longer a threat. <laughs> Wouldn't go that far. Tesso's not Definitely the only go hothead among them. But hey, at least they probably won't blindside you anymore, and that's a victory in itself. Guess that is a step forward. A baby one. Anyway, we should go check up on 99. Something tells me they're not in the clear just yet. Let's go. Hmm. Actually, well, damn, I can just keep going, huh? Okay, good to know. What the hell? Oh, Sugiro! shit! Yagamishi! Oh, thank God you're back! Tsukumo! What happened? He's knocked out cold. Damn it! Masked men attacked us! I couldn't fight them! Masked men, you say? Were they any different from what the Liumang wear? Uh, I, I couldn't get a good look. Sukiyoshi, they stuck up on him with a bat and came after me next. They caught me. My pinky. They broke it? Hey, are you okay? I'll call an ambulance. There are these photos and a message I was told to give to you, Yagamishi. They said to tell you this is your final warning. Don't threaten me. me. <laughs> Hurts. Shit. If they want me, then come after me. Talk. I think the Leomon were part of the plan, as bait. They probably only came to lure us away from the office. The worst part is it fucking worked. <sighs> How dare these masked men break Sukumo's pinky? This camera ought to show everyone coming in and out of the building. Look, there's me and Kaito chasing down the Leoman. But here's the hitch.
There were seven of them, and they didn't have those trademark white masks. So clearly, they're not Liumang. <laughs> they must have got the white masks to lure us out, meaning they're the ones calling the shots here. Wouldn't surprise me if they were also Ahara's accomplices to murder. That'd be something. No. It's hard to believe a single murder could involve so many people. Really? Why do you say that? More friends, more loose lips. One slip of the tongue can bring down an entire group. Taking a man's life would require absolute solidarity from every single member. What could be their connection? Could be their Ahara's buddies in blue. After hearing what happened to his kid, they couldn't help but feel for the guy. If it were me, yeah, I'd sympathize. But not enough to watch a man die. Or do the deed myself. Yeah, who threw their life away for that? Unless we're talking about the mob over here. Oh no, that east seems that good, huh? East Considering the area's volatility, the Leomong are the best bet in the house. But if it's not them, well, there is the Seiryu clan, but they have some decorum compared to these guys. And then the Komi Jewel, the Koreans, they would never get caught on camera. They're shy like that. Go figure. <laughs> Impressive list you've got up there, Mr. Handyman. Too bad they're all dead ends. Hey, if there's a crime in Kamurocho, would you know who did it off the top of your head? No. Uh, uh. So these guys killed Mikoshiba, huh? What sort of faces are behind those masks? Those Joko masks. Actually, that kind of looks like Jim Carrey is a Riddler. I think about it now. This footage is the lead we've been waiting for. Now we're gonna hunt them down for Tsukumo and Sukiura. You get hit in the head or something? Find them and they'll mess your ass up. Will they? Don't you get it? They were planning to take you out, man. The Liumang letting you off is nothing short of a miracle. Or would you rather risk your neck over nothing? Where we come from, risking our necks the bare minimum. <laughs> you Ijinsho guys must not see much action. Yeah, well, in Ijinsho, a handyman's wages don't cover life and limb. I don't recall ever hiring you. Yeah, and if you asked me now, I'd say hell no. This shit's getting way too over my head. And yours. Sorry, Kaito-san. But I'm gonna have to pass on drinks for a while. Send my regards to the lads. No, well, well, hey, chickening out. Never chase with leaves. Well, the only thing we can do. Well, first let's rest up. Right, actually. Okay. All that said, I think we. Damn, alright, I'll rest up first. Ah, the agony! I was in a cold sweat all of yesterday. <laughs> this rate, I'll be forced to type one handed. If you do the math, my pinky is worth more than an average person's whole hand. We're talking about at least a 30% drop in efficiency. <sighs> it's been a while since I got it this bad. We might even throw up. So, leaving Kamurocho made you rusty, huh? Really, with that? If I could wish the pain away, I would, man. Hey, if you've got the energy to complain, you'll be just fine. Isn't it right, talk? I'm gonna make this up to you guys. I promise. Well, if you want to do that, we'll need to figure out who and where they are. There's a high possibility this group is directly behind Mikoshiba's murder. And of course, that would mean they know Ehara as well. How about swapping more info with the Kanagawa police? Let's save that for when we really need it. We're not the authorities here, so we need to play our cards close to our chest. I think that's a wise decision.
Sauri sans on top of getting things set up with Ahara, right? In that case, I'll head back to Kamarocho. Take your time prepping. We can always regroup up there. I'll just go back to Tom Rutro. Let's go to the front to see first. There we go. Alright, that's good. I'm going to now. Sayo is waiting on me. What's up, Kaito-san? Something wrong? Call me crazy. But doesn't the city seem noisier to you? What the hell? Kaito senses tingling or something? Hmm, maybe they are. Well, no point trying to explain shit that doesn't make sense. Anyway, I need to go talk to Sari-san before the interview. Yeah, I need to. So let's go talk to her. Hold on a minute, Todd. What? what? I'm noticing a lot more punk scurrying around than normal. Something's up. Really? Maybe so. Hey, don't I know you two? You're detectives around here, ain't you? Yeah, so what? You ever seen this guy before? A few years ago, he was the manager at some girls' bar nearby. I haven't seen this guy around. Well, maybe I have and just forgot. You really need all cases. these meatheads just to find one dude? <laughs> Must be one slippery eel. Damn right he is. How do you know him or not? Hmm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Out of curiosity, what's a guy doing running a girl's bar? I don't think he actually ran the floor or anything. All I care about is him up and vanishing out of nowhere. So he's a missing person? Since when? Five years ago. Five I mean, years ago? disappearing from Kamurocho isn't that uncommon. Five years? What do you really expect to find? Your guy have a name? And who gave the order to find him? I'm trying to be cute? We're the ones asking the questions here. Don't fuck with us! Who's fucking with who, asshole? You want to ask questions? You're gonna have to ask nice. Nice or not, information has a price. It's our bread and butter, so we don't give handouts. How about I butter your brains on the sidewalk? Oh, you gonna, you gonna try that? Straight to throwing punches, huh? Even the Yakuza treated people better than that. Ah, 
Fuck off! <sighs> what a bitch. Here we go. Hey, what's up? That all you guys got? Kamurocho used to be tough. Look at these punks. <laughs> Kaito san. Huh? It's Akatsu. First name Daimu. You know him? Former Tojo clan guy, ex Yakuza. <laughs> well, if you say so. Yagami Detective Agency. That's right. Maybe I ought to just hire you guys for this. We're looking for a guy. You heard, didn't you? Miss Guy, you're after. He was some kind of girls' bar manager here in town. I take it this manhunt is your idea? No. Soma's taking point on this one. Came from one of his connections. There's gonna be a big pile of cash in it for whoever finds him. Practically all of Kamurocho's in on this race. And Soma is? He's the one in charge of the RK gang. Of course, he's former Tojo clan too. First name Kazuki. That's crazy. Did the whole Tojo clan join this thing? Kaito would know all about all the bullshit rules it takes to keep the Yakuza running. They'll take their cut from you and call it the honorable thing to do in the same damn breath. Right, Kaito? In this new age, wouldn't you be better off joining us? You guys are too small time to pull that shit on me. <laughs> you know what else, though? In the Yakuza, if your boys went down, it was on you to get revenge for them. I don't give two shits about that these days. I would say, if there's someone disrespecting you, you might as well go get the jump on them. I would walk right up and stick them in the gut. <laughs> you wouldn't even see it coming, detective. Yeah? So don't go disrespecting me. There won't be a warning next time. Okay. Akatsu, you said? Did he get very far in the Tojo clan? Nah. He may have had the potential, but he never got to make anything of it. The whole thing came crashing down before he got his time in the sun. Soma's the same way, actually. They both tried to climb up the Yakuza ranks, but then the families disbanded. And by the time that happened, all the pawns were cleared off the board. Hmm. <laughs> so, now they're ex-Yakuza in the wind. And along comes this gang without all the rules and systems they were dealing with. 
you end up with RK, Network of Thugs. RK? RK. What does the acronym stand for? <laughs> Who the hell knows? After the Yakuza, I guess they wanted to sound more Western. If they think they can replace the Tojo clan, those are pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, but I wouldn't say they've been discriminating. Civilian punks who want quick cash are easy recruits. RK's happy to scoop them up. Next thing you know, you've got an asshole army. That's unfortunate, but... Speaking of the Tojo clan, have you talked to Higashi lately? Yeah. As far as ex-Tojo clan guys go, he's one of the good ones. Oh, good the family him. left him in charge of that arcade, and now that they're gone, he's basically the owner. I heard he even gave some of the younger family guys jobs. If you get a chance, you ought to show up there every once in a while. Nah, Higashi. I am the last person in the world that guy wants to see. What is it? Hello, sir. Pretty tasty, thanks. Nice. Last week they actually got the Yoshinoya license, and it just happened to be a generic beef for a restaurant. Sorry, son. Yagami san made it. Hi. Sorry for the wait. I ran into some typical nonsense. We good to go? I've been good to go for a while. Ehara is waiting, and so are the answers. First thing we'll want to try to get is how involved he was in Mikoshiba's murder. From the way it's been so far, I doubt he'll be eager to tell you. If he won't open up, we'll have to play the trump card. Yagami san. Ehara won't know what hit him. I don't mind being the ace in the hole. Are you and Again. your ego ready then, Yagami-san? <laughs> well, ego, huh? this ain't my department. Fill me in back at the office, okay? <laughs> I might even tidy the place up a bit if you're lucky. Lots of open bottles to polish off. Oh, uh, we're going? Yeah, we are. To the Tokyo Detention Center, we go. Oh, I thought you'd lost already. So, what more could my lawyers want from me here? Well, normally I would say the same. However, a corpse turned up as you said it would. It turns out you have a pension for prophecy, Ahara-san. <laughs> prophecy, huh? Kinda dramatic. Akihiro Ehara. No Hoshino today? Did you fire the poor guy? Yagimi's my name, sir. In a past life, I used to work with Genda and Saori-san. But today, I'm in Serio High School in a contract advisory role for one of their clubs. Serio High School? That's right. It's the same school Toshiro-kun went to four years ago. You'd know it. I happen to be out there working a separate case. But that was when Shirosaki sensei called, and so that's why I'm here. Well, well. Okay. Why are you here then? That'd be obvious at this point, I'd think. As you know, Mikoshiba turned up as you said. His body was found in a warehouse. The question is, why did you know that well enough to proclaim it in court? Ha <laughs> You might say it was a miracle. 
I wished hard enough for it to come true, and suddenly it did. Care to tell us why you'd wish for a miracle like that? Do you really need me to explain why? Mikoshiba, you blame him for Toshiro-kun's death, don't you? I do. Even though when you took the school to court, no evidence turned up. A third-party investigation found no bullying occurred, didn't it? At school, Mikoshiba tortured my son. He would beat him up, and then he'd demand all his money. That damn kid was a star student with high grades. My son's own class wouldn't stand up to him. To avoid being beaten, Toshiro used to. He'd steal money from me or his mother to make sure he could pay Mikoshiba off. Ahara-san, you seem to know a lot about what happened to your son. Do you have any proof? Would I have lost if I did? That school can rot in hell for all I care. Speaking of, you know what I'm convicted for. It was being a pervert. I admit to everything. I groped a businesswoman's ass in plain sight on a full train. There's no way I'm fighting for an appeal. So as for my defense, I'm in no need of lawyers anymore. Ahara-san, just a second. Why would I give you that? Yagami-san? Hiromi Kashiba died in a lot of pain. His final moments were truly horrific. The last thing he felt must have been fear. After slitting his throat, his body was left to rot. <sighs> Doesn't that sound great? My God tells me that Howard is guilty for sure. There's no doubt he's connected to Mikoshiba's murder. I need to hold his attention and convince him to stay. I gotta make him understand I have more info than the police do. So. Take a look at this. Oh, Mikoshiba. <laughs> Looks like he's seen better days. Where'd you get the photo? From a teacher at Serio High. But where she got it is the interesting part. A strange woman gave it to her and said to stay away from the Mikoshiba case. <sighs> you remember Sawa Sensei, yes? She transferred to Serio four years ago, not long before your son passed away. Yeah, not a face I'd soon forget. She told the whole court he was never bullied. True. She did say that. And it's not just her I detest. The administrators, the lawyers, felt like choking the life right out of them. But if anyone needed to pay, it was Mikoshiba. He got what he deserved. It's nothing short of insane that they were just gonna let him get a teaching credential. It all comes back to a flawed and broken system of laws that has no business calling itself justice. And it was you, wasn't it? You orchestrated every aspect of how Mikoshiba would die. But you didn't act alone. Who were the people behind it? How'd you convince them to kill a man? <laughs> That's a good one. You, my friend, are way off. Well, he's definitely hiding something. The way that interview went, Ahara is definitely guilty. But if we can't connect him to the murderers, we're left with no leads to follow. Yeah, kept that secret on lockdown no matter what I asked. What could possibly link Ahara to those men? Damn it! And I was so close, too. To think they're still somewhere in Ijinjo. I need to find them before the trail goes cold. So you're heading back to Yokohama? Not tonight. Kaito's waiting for me in the office. I'll be in town for now. Okay. If anything changes, I'll contact one of you. Good to be back in my office.
Kaito-san, I'm back. Kaito-san? Oh, uh, hey, did you see that email from Tsukumo? Huh? Uh, it wasn't that long ago. It's something you gotta see, though. What is it? Something happened? It's the murder footage. What? Niko Shiba's murder ended up on the internet. It's going viral on all the social media sites. Someone linked it? You gotta forgive me. I'll do anything you want. Oh, of course they would record it. I swear. Toshiro Kun was okay. I didn't think. I didn't know he killed himself. I really didn't know. I swear I'll try to make it up to him somehow. The rest of my life making up for it. Okay, got the sense of the stuff then. What the hell? Stop it, stop it, Wait, Ehara did kill him. Wait a minute. Something Ehara doesn't add has up. An alibi for this, doesn't he? They already found him guilty, and that's the whole reason he couldn't have killed Mikoshiba, right? But if that's the case, what the hell is this? One way or another, either this thing is staged. Or his entire alibi was a massive cover-up. They can't both be true. But there's something I just can't shake. If you want my opinion on it, this looks real. <clears throat> I need to have another chat with Ahara. Damn it. I'm not gonna let him get away with this. Damn, now that's a twist. A train groping and a murder seem to occur simultaneously. Yagami relentlessly pursues these cases, attempting to poke holes in each. After confronting Akihiro Ehara, the key figure in both crimes, he witnesses a harrowing video that provides more questions than answers. In it, a bound man pleads for his life, but his attacker, bound by vengeance, snuffs it out. Hmm. Chapter 5, Double Jeopardy. So the murder footage is already making the rounds online. I don't think it's showing up on TV, though. Yeah, the net's a mess right now. It's all unsubstantiated rumors and unverified sources. Typical, really. An ex-cop going from by-the-book sex offender to vigilante avenger overnight is prime forum drama. Sentiment seems to be swinging in favor of Ehara, but there's plenty of folks on the fence about it, too. The reactions have been all over the board. Do we know if that video is authentic? I mean, CG has come a long way, right? Oh, or perhaps a deep fake. That is plausible. AI has reached a point where it can generate pretty convincing facsimiles. Oh yeah, ain't that Someone true. even made a video that made it look like the US AI president still can't was saying a bunch right of crazy though. stuff. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Deep fakes are only getting more authentic looking. Can't guys like you tell if a video is fake or not though? Aren't there any signs? Oh, there are several telltale signs of a video being doctored. So I ran every check I could think of on the murder footage. And wouldn't you know it, nothing came up. Most likely, we're looking at the real deal. Most likely? 
Well, no one can claim with absolute certainty that it wasn't altered in some way. Which means it's not substantial enough to prove Ihara's guilt. At least not in a court of law. Gotcha. Do you know when and where the footage was uploaded? It was posted sometime last night, but the source is too hard to pin down. The uploaders spread it across multiple servers overseas in a well-concerted effort to hide their tracks. Makes sense. But I'll bet it ultimately came from Mikoshiba's killers, no matter how real or fake it is. How do you figure? Think about it. No one could have staged that unless they knew the specifics of how Mikoshiba was killed. From how he was positioned to little things like the blood on the ground, every last detail was just as the detectives described it. That's a good point. Oh, all this browsing's really taken a toll on the old pinky. Why would the killers go through the trouble of spreading this footage? What good would it serve them? Causing a public uproar? Obstructing the investigation? Whatever the case, nice to have some interviewing to do. Looks like another visit to Ehara might clear things up. You should ask Shirosaki-sensei about it. I should? Yeah, that was my thought too. Definitely should. I'll take care of that next time though. Yeah. That actually, that genuinely caught me off guard. I did not expect that. Yeah. That was a good twist. So yeah, I'll stop here for today. If you enjoyed the stream, make sure to follow me on Twitch and follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post all my previous VODs. And subscribe to the funny for trying to avoid you a couple more things though some buddies of mine. And join the funny crew Discord. You can find a link out on my Twitch channel or in the description of this VOD. But in any case though, thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.